Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing the trade rumors involving Deshaun Watson to the Carolina Panthers. So let's get started. Now, if you're new to following my podcast, thank you for joining. And for those who aren't new but kind of just tune in here and there, I just like to break down my podcast into three different parameters. The first one is who the players or coaches involved. The second parameter is why the move was made or potentially could be made. And the last but not least parameter is is the instant gratification versus long-term gains. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about, well, in this case, it's the player, Deshaun Watson. Who is Deshaun Watson? Well, he came out of Clemson as a 2017 first-round pick, drafted number 12 overall by the Houston Texans. He then went on to three Pro Bowls, and this past year had a career season despite a decimated roster in which he ranked first first in passing yards at 4,823 ranked 7th in touchdown passes with 33 and ranked 2nd in quarterback rating at 112.4. Now how do I remember these numbers? It's a lot of research, it's a lot of talk about just talking about Deshaun Watson in general and just knowing the NFL as a whole. And Deshaun Watson is a hot commodity. Every NFL team wants him. Well, almost every team, right? If you don't have a franchise quarterback, you're obviously looking into the avenue of possibly trading for a franchise quarterback. And Deshaun Watson would be at the top of the list. All right. So no doubt a top five quarterback. And like I said, any team would want him. 95% of the fans would want him. And here we are talking about Deshaun Watson to the Carolina Panthers, potentially. All right. But looking at it from a management perspective, of course every team wants Deshaun Watson, every fan base wants Deshaun Watson, or the majority of fan bases, you get my point. But it's more than that. This is not fantasy football or a game of Madden where you can just make trades and have him on your roster. No, there's a lot of different parameters that play a role into fitting Deshaun Watson on an NFL roster. One is salary cap, right? From a management perspective, you have to look at salary cap because salary cap plays a role. The locker room dynamic holds weight inside that locker room. And last but not least, the risk reward of getting a high profile player like Deshaun Watson can be volatile. So when you take that all into account, there's a really a lot going on, not just the football on field production, but you have to look at it as a team chemistry standpoint and really see if he really fits that team's cultural identity. Make sense? Makes sense. All right. So getting back to the GM perspective, these power play moves are are the ones that get GMs hired, admired, and fired, right? You either look like a stud for making this deal because Deshaun Watson ends up being a Hall of Fame player, and he goes on to be one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Or there's different risk factors involved. He could get hurt season could be cut short his career could take a downward spiral fall and whoever you get for Deshaun Watson because obviously the going rate right now is the talk is first round draft picks if those first round draft picks don't pan out then it makes you look like a bad GM I mean these are all in hindsight obviously because we never know for sure everything has to be in real time so that's why I say these are the power play moves that gets GM's admired or fired because it's moves like these that really puts the stamp on that GM's career or tenure with whatever organization he's with all right so Watson is a top five quarterback I said it all along he is a top five quarterback What teams are realistically in the market for Deshaun Watson? Which GMs are more inclined to pull the trigger? More importantly, after running the numbers and the salary cap health of these teams or potential teams, I believe the Carolina Panthers are a good fit. Mainly because of the points I just mentioned, but also because they have tradable assets and young tradable assets. Because Deshaun Watson, as you know, is a young NFL quarterback. So if you're Texans GM Nick Casario, you want to make sure that you're getting young talent in return, not just draft capital. All right, and I'll go and talk about that in more detail later in this podcast. So when you look at it from a positional needs standpoint and all the different parameters I just brought up and mentioned from a GM perspective, it makes sense that the Carolina Panthers would be in play. All right, so what would it take? You know, like you look at it, uh, what would it take uh, the, about the Carolina Panthers? What would it take for the Carolina Panthers to land a Deshaun Watson? Well, I spoke about the quarterback situation earlier in my podcast, and I included that podcast in the description below so you can kind of tie in 
that podcast with this podcast so you can kind of see my thoughts in real time and kind of connect the dots that way. All right, so they are a team that could use Deshaun Watson. I mean, I think that goes for 95% of the teams out there. And what would it take? Aside from the number eight overall pick in the NFL draft that the Carolina Panthers currently hold, they would have to at least give up a conditional 2022 first round pick, right? A 2022 first round pick along with that number eight overall pick this year. And that's a lot of draft capital to give up, especially if you're a new GM, Scott Fetter, and you kind of want to hold on to those golden tickets because those are what make or break your team. You know, the way the salary cap set up, especially with the salary cap diminishing this year or going into this year, I think it's 195 to 175, somewhere around there. It's going to get diminished. And when you do that, you need rookie deals. Rookie deals help offset the high priced veterans and you guys get the picture of where salary cap plays a role all right but with this but with that being said if i'm gm nick casario this is a make or break power move right because draft picks are no guarantee i just brought that up just no guarantee with draft picks that could be first round bust for all you know and then what then nick casario is out of houston in the next two three two three years calling for your head just like in the movie draft day a reference I said on Twitter earlier that caught on. A lot of people loved it. And you guys get the point, right? So leverage the trade by getting a proven player in return. I think that's Nick Casario's best bet along with the draft capital. However, as you know, Texas Texans Deshaun Watson has a no trade clause. So it's kind of up in the air. He holds all the, all the chips, so to speak, in where he wants to play. But I believe the Texans... Um, From the Texans' perspective, it would be a good play. Now, again, what does Carolina give up to get Deshaun Watson? He's a franchise quarterback, so what would you give up? Let me ask you. You can't just give up draft picks because, again, Nick Casario is probably going to want a proven veteran player in return to leverage this trade. Otherwise, he's going to be out in two to three years if those first-round picks don't pan out. You have to give up something to gain something. And this is where I... (laughs) it kind of gets debatable, right? So for me, if I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers roster, I'm Nick Casario, I'm looking at DJ Moore. DJ Moore is a young wide receiver who has Pro Bowl potential. Let's break it down. He's a 2018 first round pick, drafted number 24 overall at the University of Maryland. He posted back-to-back thousand yard seasons um, from his sophomore to now his third year. And he's really a player who would be a nice asset for the Houston Texans. And He's six foot, 210 pounds. Those types of receivers don't grow on trees, especially with the speed that's in the late, I would say it's the 439 to the 442 range. Very, very fast, shifty receiver. He's tough, physical, gritty. The guy has all the skill sets needed to play under any scheme. And what I like about him is, gosh, man, the guy's a security blanket on third downs. He high points the ball on 50 50 passes, winning those winnable balls and coming down with the catch he's not afraid to work the middle that's something that shows about his toughness I think he makes tough catches in traffic and especially when he runs those crosser routes or especially those quick slants on third and short you can really see him plant that foot and drive on it gaining separation from the defensive back these are things that as a young wide receiver you really don't fine-tune these things until later on in the course or middle later on in the course of your career and DJ Moore is a guy who's getting it done early on in in this stage of his career and it's really a testament to him and how well he's been playing so as much as Panthers fans probably hate to say it you're gonna have to give up at least a DJ Moore to the Houston Texans to yield Deshaun Watson and it goes back to the salary cap Okay. Well, why DJ Moore? Well, I just pointed out reasons why, because he's a really good football player, Pro Bowl potential player, right? He'll be in the Pro Bowl in the next five years, you can bet your bet, probably the next two years, maybe even next year. And the move makes sense simply because the Texans need salary cap health. They are $17.8 million, I believe, in the hole in terms of the salary cap. And they need to make room on the roster and get younger at the posi- at positions and kind of fix Bill O'Brien's hiccups for all the things that he's been doing, um, trading for Brandon Cooks and so forth, which I'll get into in a, in a moment, and why DJ Moore makes sense. All right, so it makes sense because, like I said, the Texans are in the hole $17.8 million and cat space is needed. 
if you add DJ Moore's contract, that's only $2 million because the Panthers would eat up the dead money tied to his contract, which means that the Texans would take on the remainder balance of that contract and it would only cost around $2 million. $2 million compared to what Brandon Cooks is getting paid, $12 million, that's a $10 million difference and $10 million savings that the Texans would get in cap relief. Now on top of that, you look at the dead money associated to Brandon Cooks' contract and it's zero. So you can wipe your hands clean of Brandon Cooks in that contract, get in a young player like DJ Moore from the Deshaun Watson trade and yield something in return because again, you don't know if these draft picks are going to turn out and if I'm Nick Casario, I'm looking at it from a leverage standpoint because I don't want these Houston fans calling for my head if I pick the wrong guy. I just don't want that headache. I want to be around in Houston for a very long time. All right? So, not short lived. I don't want to live a short lived GM career. All right? But if not DJ Moore, let's look at another player, right? Because you're going to have to give up something to gain something, right? It's kind of obvious. I look at another tradable asset, I hate to say it, but let's look at Brian Burns, right? Brian Burns is an edge rusher. He has 16 and a half sacks his last two years, and he's a 2019 first round pick, drafted number 16 overall, I believe. I got to double check on that from Florida State. Yes, number 16 overall. Man, I'm getting this in. In his first two years in the league, it's hard to trade away a player of Burns' skill set. I love Brian Burns, but that type of production it's hard to replicate but at the end of the day again you're getting a franchise quarterback in return so whether it's dj moore or brian burns you're gonna pick your poison you got to give up one of those two players in this proposed deal that i'm discussing because again if i'm nick casario i don't just want draft picks i want a proven veteran player or a proven young player who i can build my future around that's just how it works okay so why brian burns why Brian Burns? Well, one, he's a very good player, just like DJ Moore. But aside from that, again, it comes down to the salary cap. If I'm Nick Casario looking, crunching the numbers like an accountant, I'm looking at it and say, well, dang, we're $17.8 million in the hole. That sucks. But hey, look at JJ Watt's contract. How much do we owe him? Oh, $17.5 million? And how much dead money is tied to his contract? Zero? So basically, we can release or trade JJ Watt, save basically be break even right 17.8 from 17 point so three hundred thousand dollar difference break even and still yield a younger player like brian burns in return huh how do we do that well deshaun watson wants out let's trade deshaun watson get brian burns and two first round draft picks sounds good to me it makes sense you see where i'm going with this it makes sense but <laughs> there's more to the story there's more and I'm not talking about DJ Moore I'm talking about the kicker in the sweetener in this deal Teddy Bridgewater let's bring up Teddy Bridgewater he's someone I spoke about earlier in the podcast I believe it was three four days ago my first Panthers podcast I got a thousand views something around there got good feedback from Panthers fans on retaining Brit Teddy Bridgewater because of his contract I have good news for you Panthers fans I'm gonna break it down for you on why Teddy Bridgewater will be moved along with either Brian Burns or DJ Moore. Two first round draft picks for Deshaun Watson. A lot to give up for Deshaun Watson, but again, when you get a generational talent like Deshaun Watson, it's well worth the investment. And I'm going to break it down for you right now. Okay? So, Teddy Bridgewater, what I consider this move to be a cap consideration move by the Carolina Panthers, he has a $23 million cap number for the upcoming season. Okay? If they were to release him, they would only save $3 million because he has $20 million in dead money. Okay, so 23 minus 20 equals $3 million. That's how much money they'd be saving if they were to simply release him, wipe their hands clean, and move on. But, but if they trade him, that $23 million cap number for 2021, the dead money associated to that deal of trading him away, would then become $10 million. So 23 minus $10 million in dead money means a cap savings of not $3 million, but $13 million. Caroline would save $13 million from wiping, wiping their hands clean of Teddy Bridgewater in a trade for Deshaun Watson. So 
you can use that as leverage if Deshaun Watson approves a trade to Carolina and say, hey, look, okay, if I'm Scott Federer, I'm looking at it. Okay, man, so we want Deshaun Watson, and uh, this is what we're willing to give up. Okay, based, we know what your needs are. We know, you know, you might release J.J. Watt. We know you might release Brandon Cooks. We have a player. We have DJ Moore or Brian Burns. Pick, pick one. All right, you're not going to get both of them. Just pick one of those guys. All right, we already know you want draft picks, so you get our first this year and our first next year. So you get two first-round draft picks, Brian Burns or DJ Moore, and you're going to have to pick up Teddy Bridgewater's contract because I'm not going to, I'm not going to deal with that. If you get those assets, you're going to have to help me out too because I know I'm getting to Sean Watson in return, but that's just one player. You have to at least take on Teddy Bridgewater's contract because there's no way I'm paying $23 million dollars plus $10.4 million for Deshaun Watson and have $33.4 whatever, $34 million tied up in quarterbacks for the upcoming season. I'm not just going to do that. So you're going to have to take on Teddy Bridgewater's contract from Marty Herney. All right? Take on that. I don't want anything to do with that. That wasn't me before me. Nick Casario, you're going to have to take that on as a thank you because I'm getting Deshaun Watson, but here you are getting draft picks and you're picking my back pocket with Brian Burns or DJ Moore. Okay, so deal or no deal. That's a fair trade. It's a four for one deal because when you look at it from a logical standpoint, you're getting a franchise quarterback, Panthers are, Panthers get Deshaun Watson, franchise quarterback, and they're giving up two first round picks, which is okay. It's a lot, but it's okay. And then you're going to give up a young foundational player, Brian Burns or DJ Moore. Okay, now it's getting a little steep. But you're taking on the kicker, which is Teddy Bridgewater's contract, wiping your hands clean and saving money, $13 million to be exact, for you to sign other free agents. Makes sense. It makes sense because Nick Casario can look at it and be like, okay, we're getting draft picks. That's what we wanted, man. We got draft picks as a new GM. That's what I want. I want more darts at the board. Then I look at it and say, look, oh man, so now we have Teddy Bridgewater. Okay, so I can I can live with that because, you know, he could be a stopgap quarterback for whatever quarterback in the future that I want. Okay, I'll roll with that. If anything, he's going to be a good backup. Okay, I'll roll with it for one more year. Okay, because he's tied to a three-year contract. Okay, I get it. I'll take that on. And on top of that, I mean, that was the kicker. But on top of that, then you get a foundational player. DJ Moore or Brian Burns. And then you can wipe your hands clean of a contract that you really didn't negotiate in the first place because you weren't there. Or a trade that or move that you weren't there when Brandon Cooks was traded or when J.J. Watt was given that contract. And then you can start fresh. So it really makes sense from both organizations to make this move. Those are the players involved. And people are asking me, would I make this move? You know, what? Would I, would I make this trade if I'm Panthers GM Scott Federer? And the answer is absolutely yes. Anytime you get a generational talent, especially at the quarterback position, with all these rules dictated toward the offense, we're seeing it today. Defense wins championships, but at the end of the day, offense puts fans in the stands. And what's getting ratings right now? Fantasy football. Fantasy football is what? Offense. So it's a business at the end of the day. You get a foundational quarterback that you can have for the next 10, 15 years who has yet to enter the prime of his career. On top of not entering the prime of his career, let's peel back another layer of the onion to get to the core. Let's just be real. In two to three years time, he could be a MVP candidate. Shoot, he could be an MVP candidate next year if he has the right talent surrounded by him. I mean, look what he did in Houston. You don't think he's going to have better success surrounded by better wide receivers, a better offensive line, a better running game? Of course he is. And what GM Scott Federer should do is he should, he should make excuse me a power play move for Deshaun Watson by using the analytics I just pointed out. Trade away two first-round picks, Brian Burns or DJ Moore, so you make Nick Casario happy, but then also he gets some leverage because it has to be a fair trade. And force him to take on Teddy Bridgewater's contract. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. I hope you liked what I had to say. If you did, please hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen as I keep all things beast. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Beast Rider out.